let's just discuss this in a little bit more detail about, about what's going to happen. Because it is important to tell people that powers do already exist to compel people to attend. But the issue is here that, that they're not often used. And What's changing in? Well, it, the devil's going to be in the detail in all of this. But I, I think you could firstly remember who is going to force somebody to come into court. I suspect the production agencies will be very reluctant to use force on somebody. We don't have prison officers anymore in courts. We don't have police officers effectively in courts. So who's actually going to be force, forcing somebody to come up from the cells? What's the effect going to be if they come up kicking and screaming and start disrupting the court process and the sentencing process if they start shouting? I mean, I, it isn't lost on me that we're approaching the party political conference season mm. and we're coming up to an election probably next year. And I just wonder how much of this is political window dressing and wanting to look hard on crime. Just to, just to pick you up on one thing, though, you said that we don't have prison officers anymore in court. So who are the people in uniform who sit next to suspects? They are from the production agencies like Serco, G4. They, they are the people who sit in court in the main. You will have prison officers for Category A prisoners, but that's very, very rare. OK, but I, I suppose in this case, they, they, he, she would be a Category A She'd be classed as a potential category. Would be a category a yeah. prisoner, but but then think in terms of you know the, the prison officers are very reluctant to be seen to be using force. I mean, it it can rebound upon them if they do, so they're very very uncomfortable with it. And what do we gain by all of this? I suppose we gain by the families feeling better, but actually. Mm. I don't, I don't know that it achieves anything, and I think it actually brings the court system into disrepute. Well, what, what would be the other option then? Because what, one discussion that we had last week was that, you know, the, the proceedings could be, could be sent via video link into their cell and, and, and people who are convicted could be forced to watch proceedings from their cell. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a possibility. But again, you've got to have efficient hardware uh, and software to be able to do that. And we, we don't really have that in this country. You could produce them to a video link room within the prison, uh, and that may be a better way forward than actually forcing them and bringing them up in in life form in life form from the cells, because I just think that's, that's going to present mm. enormous problems. But there's a lot of passion here, isn't there, from the families? And I suppose it's very difficult to put yourself... In, in, in their position where they want to see justice and they want to, to show the pain that they've suffered, the anguish that they've suffered, and they want to see the person who's done that to them punished and they think they should be there to see it. Yes, I accept that. But equally, um, they've been there. They've been there throughout the court process. In the case of Lucy Letby, a, a very long-running court process. In the case of Thomas Chapman, a fairly long-running court process. So the families have seen them there. And do they achieve much more by just seeing them face-to-face -face when they come to be sentenced? These people know what sentence they're likely to, to receive. Mm. And I don't think that forcing somebody up into the dock if they're reluctant to and they're fighting against it, I don't think that achieves anything at all. In will will the threat in the case of people who will not be on the end of whole life sentences, which are still rare in this country, will the threat of that extra two years in prison, though, not simply force some of these criminals to go, I don't want an extra two years. Actually, when the cold reality of it strikes, I'll come up for an hour and I'll go back down. Well, there, in my experience, there are very few prisoners who refuse to come up for their sentencing. From the cells. There are very few prisoners who refuse to go into the dock for the sentencing. It's only people in the case of people like Lucy Letby who know they're going to receive a whole life sentence, or Thomas Chapman who knows he's going to receive a very, very substantial sentence. I don't think an extra two years is going to make a jot of difference to them. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose, you know, is that just because we've seen a set of, you know, horrendous crimes committed by Chapman, Cashman and Letby recently and these people have not come into the dock? 
Yes, I mean, I think it, it's become it's become high profile, and the more one talks about it, the more many of these people will choose not to come into the dock. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, do we achieve anything by dragging them, mm. kicking and screaming into the into the court pro- into the courtroom? They've been there throughout the court process, um, and it's just for the sentence yeah. there. They're saying no, I don't want to come. Yeah, I, I can see you feel strongly on this. Ian. I, I was just wondering about about the, the date, about when this is likely to happen, because it suggests that no specific month has been given, but then uh, for the new law. But the prime minister has said it would be introduced in the autumn. When, in your eyes, do you think that that is likely to come to fruition? Then I think we'll know more at the party political conferences, won't we? It will be an announcement to. Uh appease the the hard right i suspect just just on on the issue of these whole life sentences do do you feel like um they they are being used as as they were intended to or do you feel like judges are not using them because we've seen a lot of sentence re- sentences being reviewed in recently haven't we being sent up for review that they've been too lenient do you think that judges are not using the full extent of their powers as much as they should be no, I think we have to trust our judges. We have a very good judiciary in this country, and we have to trust judges. And I think in the main, they always do get the sentence right. There is provision within the law for there to be um, an appeal against an unduly lenient sentence. But in the main, I think judges get it right. And I think when politicians involve themselves too much in sentencing by saying that it will become the norm, it will become the default position to impose a whole life sentence in certain cases, that becomes quite dangerous and you're taking away the real discretion that judges have when it comes to sentence. So I suppose the perception of sentencing, because I suppose when the public are asked in polls about sentencing, the public often says that suggests that for the most serious crimes, sentences appear in the UK to be too lenient, too light. You, you wouldn't agree with that? No, I wouldn't agree with that. And I, I, what I what I would say to the public, and I think it's often misunderstood and it's a myth, that if somebody gets a, a life sentence with a recommendation, they serve a minimum of 45 years or 40 years, that is the minimum term they will serve. And in my experience, there's no guarantee that anyone will ever come out of prison when they receive a sentence such as that. They have to demonstrate to the parole board that they have turned their life around and they're no longer a danger to the public. And I think, you know, for people who've used firearms indiscriminately or certainly somebody who's murdered a number of people, that's a very difficult task. And in general, although they may not get a whole life sentence, the chances are that they will spend the majority of their life in prison.